Hey, today I thought I'd do a quick video on stuff I've been picking up, either buying uh, eBay, trading, buying at a local uh, LCS, or, or however. Um, and uh, I've just been watching some uh, videos lately, and um, spoilers, you're not going to see Batman Elmer Fudd uh, crossover in this video. Sorry if that's what you're looking for, so eh, just probably turn it off and, and move on. Um, not that that's bad, and I don't want to put down how anyone collects, but just uh, uh, the variant era uh, that's upon us is very bizarre to me. But I guess if it keeps you know local comic shops open, I guess it's a good thing, but I don't get it. Um, anyway, uh, let's get into it. Uh, a few videos back, I mentioned uh, the day that I first saw comic books, and when I went, knew what they were, and my grandmother went up to the attic, and I got a pile of old beat-up comics that my dad and uncles used to read, and... Uh, I was at a comic shop this last weekend, and I found one that I remember the picture of uh, in my head. Uh, I never read it, and my brother had it, and I think he still does. Uh, it was just extremely tattered and beat up, but, you know, it didn't have superheroes. So when you're a kid, I, I, I at least I didn't start reading monster stuff till I was a little bit older. But um, anyway, here it is, Strange Adventures. It's got some kind of witch doctor gorilla on it, cooking up some kind of brew. Uh, I will crack this open and read it, but I just this is one of the books that she gleefully came downstairs uh, with, thinking that we were going to be enamored with it, and it, we kind of just looked at it and tossed it over our shoulder like you do when you get socks on Christmas. Uh, some more books I got, some good 20 centers. I know a, a certain fellow out there that's going to appreciate that, huh? Hey, hey. <laughs> anyway, gorgeous, gorgeous Swamp Thing. Really, really nice. Great condition, good enough for me. Another beautiful 20 center. I've been buying books in, uh, in groups lately. It seems like uh, you get better uh, better prices and it's kind of fun to see what people group together when you buy stuff. So uh, then I got a, a great run of Kirby books. Uh, DC, when he went over to DC and uh, did all this stuff. I, I believe he did this with uh, Simon as well, uh, yeah. Um, so I guess that got, they got the band back together and created this wonderful book. We can read that there, but come see what weirdies I've dreamt up for you. Yeah. Anyway, he's got a little kid sleeping there, and there's the Sandman. You know, I, in all the years I've I've been buying these, I don't really remember too much about Sandman. Um, I don't know how much he was really used in the DC continuity, but. Um, I will go back and read all those now. Uh, most of these that, that I picked up, uh, I have uh, really pristine uh, copies of, which I'll probably uh, send in, get graded, and sell them. Um, you know, seven O's are, are, are around there are fine for me, as long as they present well and they look nice. You know, um, I, I like to be able to read them and not worry about what I'm doing to them when I read them. So, another one is Commandy, number one. Another just great book, obviously. Uh, Influenced, I, I imagine, by uh, Planet of the Apes back in the day. Um, but I remember my brother was very into uh, Commandy, and uh, it, it, you know, it got me into two and OMAC and all that. We reread all that stuff together. And this book I've been looking for for a long time. I just love, love this cover. It's so simple. The artwork is just the clean lines. It's just beautiful with the biplanes in the background. Again, um, it's very reminiscent of the King Kong movie with the biplanes and. Uh, what looks like a big gorilla hand coming to get Commandy and his Daisy Dukes. Uh, great, great cover, though. Perfectly centered. Beautiful. 20 center. Perfect razor sharp corners. Uh, I don't own this one. This is a, a good one to have. So uh, I saw it and grabbed it. Uh, another one, another Kirby. Mr. Miracle, which is always a hysterical character to me. And uh, with how they're bringing. Uh, dark side in uh, to their movies and, and all. I just wonder if they're going to try bringing him in uh, as well. Um, another strange character, uh, you know, obviously out of Jack Kirby's mind, so it's just one of those things you don't question, I guess. <laughs> you just take it for what it is. Um, I got this in, in a group. Um, I haven't opened it yet. Uh, I just like the cover. I know, I believe it's Golden Age reprint stuff. Uh, it's pretty good uh, looking. I, I just, it's different, you know. You can tell eras of comics, uh, I think, just by looking at them. Um, they seem to have a feel, kind of like how music, you know, through the decades will have a certain feel to it. And 
Uh, it's hard to pinpoint exactly what it is, but you can tell this book is, you know, pre, you know, 1960s. Um, it just has a certain look to it. Uh, and then I got a couple uh, pretty nice Fantastic Four gems here. Um, I, I had a, an older kind of uh, roughed up copy, so I got this one. Um, it's it's good enough for me. This will probably be one I keep. Uh, first appearance of him in the cocoon. Turns out, you know, later on to be Warlock, and um, you know, it's in uh, Thor 165, I think. He's uh, all through the 70s, and then, of course, Starlin's run on that book. Um, it was pretty amazing, so. And I got another one here, uh, Fantastic 483. It's a great cover, just a great Kirby. Uh, one thing I loved about it, though, is uh, it, it's got a signature on the bottom here, and I believe it's Joe Sinat's signature. Um, so I, I compared it, and it does look exactly like all the other signatures I've seen. So um, again, I don't. I'm going to keep this, so I don't need to send it in. <clears throat> excuse me, and get it verified and all that kind of stuff. So that's mine. Um, it's cool that his signature's on it. He was in a town near me in the fall. I didn't. I wasn't able to make it, but I think he's 94 now. So it's pretty great that he's still out doing shows. Uh, then this one I, I I picked up. I I did a trade with a local. Um, comic shop I borrowed in some boxes of uh, 90s stuff that I had that I didn't want anymore so uh, we kind of had a big trade um, and this is one of the books I got which I'm not a huge Daredevil fan of the older stuff but this is a great Wally Wood cover um, and I mean anytime you can get single digit uh, Silver Age stuff uh, at a good price or in this case trade uh, I think it's a great idea to grab it I looking at it, I'd say it's a good 6.5 maybe a 7 on a, on a good day um, but we'll see. I don't know if I'm going to keep it or, or get rid of it yet. I'll probably take a look at, you know, uh, the interior and see if, you know, if I really like it, see if it grows on me. Um, but I love, love, one of my favorite runs is Daredevil, uh, in the seventies. Um, so I was lucky enough to, along with that one, I was able to pick up some good ones that I don't have. So this is just a great Gil Kane cover with Man-Thing on it, and Daredevil, and it's just fantastic. I just always thought it was cool that they had the man without fear uh, with him who anything he touches that knows fear burns. So uh, it's just kind of a cool, you know, had to happen moment, I guess. <laughs> and are you still here that we're looking for Batman Elmer Fudd? He's not coming, sorry. I guess that would be in reply to Nick's never say never, but I will say I will never own that comic book. <laughs> Here's uh, Daredevil. Great action on this cover. You get, you know, all that typically sequential art all in in, in, a, in one panel. It's just great. And I love the remnants of the 20 cent frame. It's still there. They shrunk a little bit, but it's still kind of there. And it just, I love these covers. I actually had that one, but it was, it's pretty rough. So that's nice to get a replacement. And uh, I got 118 as well. Nice sharp covers. Um, Great, great color on them, too. They're still strong. You can tell these books have been, uh, you know, haven't seen the light of day probably for 40 years. So, uh, 119. Great, great book. I got this for Christmas one year, and I can see it's got a March cover date on it. So, that makes sense that I got that for Christmas one year because they're always, or used to be three months ahead. Um, and I got 126. It's got Torpedo in it. And I have other comics where they reference Torpedo and they reference this issue like they used to do in the corner. Like they put a little asterisk down there and uh, it would be like to Roy Thomas or whoever the editor was at the time. The last time this person appeared or they referenced something in the story. Look at the, the great Gil Kane pose on Daredevil though. It's incredible. Great, great stuff. Couldn't have had the Brown Zero without Gil Kane. And then I came across this one and... I have this already. Uh, my, mine, I would say, is probably a 5, 5.0, five oh, probably a 4, 5, uh, five oh. This one's in really nice shape. So I think uh, this will help me get more stuff. So as much as I like it, I, I think I'm going to be okay with the copy I have. Uh, but I got Daredevil 131. It's the first appearance of Bullseye. And uh, although uh, it was he was in the deeply flawed... Uh, monstrous Ben Affleck movie. Um, I think uh, Bullseye is a, is a great character for Daredevil and 
Um, I hope they use them uh, in the coming stuff, either Netflix or however else they use them, because um, the later stories of him, they make him a real uh, kind of serial killer psychopath, and I think he just became a lot more interesting than, you know, kind of a, a hitman that he was back then. Then the last couple books are uh, just uh, ones that I saw uh, that sometimes when I see stuff, I can't leave them behind, so uh, I got... Avengers 151. Again, I own this, but mine is nowhere near this white. I mean, it's just, I know people talk about how hard black covers are to find, but sometimes I wonder if white are even harder because they just, they age and they oxidize and they get dirty. But this one is just beautiful white. Great centering. You can see all the Vision's cape. I know my copy of this, his cape is uh, part of the wrap, so it's great. And the great thing about this book is it's got a Kirby cover and then uh, George Prez uh, interior, so it's that's one of my favorite combos from back in the day. So great book, great great to upgrade it. And another one that I had slabbed, and I think I showed previously, uh, I have a six five slab that uh, I'm going to put up uh, and sell. Um, just it had a lot of water spots and things on it that I didn't like, and um, so I was able to pick this up, and it is just a beautiful, beautiful book. And this one uh, was a gift from my wife. Um, she got me a eBay card uh, for Father's Day and said, I want you to get something you wouldn't you know, normally spend money on. So uh, this is a book that I had. So a lot of times I don't like to upgrade. I only like to feed my uh, comic obsession by selling or trading other comics. So it was really nice of her to do that. And I'm just really glad to have it. I, I love that character. I really hope that they... Uh, do do the character right in the uh, MCU movies coming up. Um, very interesting character, um, but uh, you know we'll see see what happens. But I'm just glad to get that because now I have a raw copy and I can let go of that slab and that makes me happy. The last one I'm going to show today is something that uh, I kind of just stumbled across and I started getting into these more because uh, ETA Nick uh, in a lot of his videos. Uh, will reference uh, fanzines and things like that and I recently sent them a few uh, so I started looking at myself and getting into black and whites and things like that you know the old creepy or or any of those black and white uh, rampaging Hulk a lot of those that came out but I saw this one and I just thought it was really cool uh, and I was buying from a guy so uh, he had this with it so I kind of threw it into the pile but it's uh, the comic art convention from 1974 and it's a really great sketch on here uh, and I can read it because I don't think you'll be able to make it out, but it's this inscription down here. It says, Martin, here's the character I think we should have a kid buddy or he'll be talking to himself all the time. I'm working up script, send schedule. Regards, Joe. So I'm pretty sure that's Joe uh, Simon, uh, and this is, must have been his idea for Captain America. So it just goes on and... Uh, it's just really, really cool. I mean, at least the logo is totally 70s. Um, but just everything through here is really, really cool. And I, I was looking through here, and there was a page in here that kind of caught my eye. And it was membership. So it looks like you were able to sign up for some kind of membership. And I went through all the names to see if I recognized anyone uh, of them. And I did, actually. One name stuck out to me. And that was Dave Belmont. Now, back in the day, you didn't have eBay, you didn't have uh, CGC Forum or Comic Connect or any of these things. You basically would look in the comic book, and a lot of these guys, you would send in your, here's my list, and you had to give first choice, second choice, third choice. There was no talk about grade. There was no talk about anything. So if they didn't have your first choice, you got second or maybe even third, and you just had to be happy that you got anything back in the mail. And back in the day, David Belmont was uh, uh, one that had that, so it's funny that... Uh, whatever this membership was, as of April 15th, he was part of it. Um, I don't recognize many of the other names. Oh, actually I do. There's Mike Carbonaro. I think he's uh, a, a pretty big dealer these days as well. I think, if I remember right, he's in the Overstreet Guide. Um, another funny thing that as I was looking through here um, was this advertisement, and it's for the Overstreet Guide, which is kind of funny to me. I don't know exactly when that came out. I think I think it was probably roughly around this time, but it's a order form for it. Vista Drive, Cleveland, Tennessee. Hmm. Anyway, uh, I'm sure back then that was kind of a, a new thing uh, for everybody is to, to get a, a value guide. Um, this is a funny, funny article too about the comic uh, 
convention luncheon they had, and actually Bob Kane was there sitting at a table, apparently. Uh, and, it, you know, there's pictures of all of them in here, and just great, great articles. Great pictures of all the, the different characters. Um, huh, that's kind of funny that, we, that I had that book. Joe Simon from Captain America to Sandman 2. And we had that Sandman book earlier, so it must just go on. I haven't read it yet, but it must go on to uh, what he planned to do afterward. looks like it talks about Prez and some of the other stuff that went in there. Um, and then on the back cover, uh, it's an advertisement for Warren Books. We create, others imitate. So this is a fun book, though, and I'm really glad that uh, Nick got me into these because I've been reading them a lot lately, and uh, it is, I think, important to look at the history and... Uh, really enjoy the hobby uh, for why a lot of us got into it, and that was just kind of a getaway and escape, and uh, you know, live in that fantasy world. Um, unfortunately, I think a lot of it has become more commercial, but I guess whatever keeps the hobby going isn't a bad thing. I guess it's uh, for guys like us. Uh, it's just got to got to roll with it, and uh, you know, keep continue on collecting the way you want to. I guess however you want to collect is fine, um, but. Uh, I won't be buying that Batman Elmer Fudd. So, anyway, till next time, keep reading.